Go. Welcome to Code Corner with Katie. what's on thinking man's mind today. What is delayed egress and where can I use it? That's an excellent question, thinking man. Thank you. I get this question a lot. Let's watch a short video on exactly what is delayed egress. And then we'll talk about where the code permits it and what the other requirements are. As you can see from that short video, delayed egress is locking the door on the egress side only for 15 seconds, unless by exception where you can have up to a 30 second delay. That's typically reserved for healthcare occupancies. And if you look at this table, we're comparing IBC 2006 through IBC 2021 and the requirements for delayed egress also NFPA 101 through 2006 through 2021 edition. So depending on what state you're in, you may have one of these codes or two. If you have more than one, the more restrictive requirements would apply. Also check your state and local codes as they may change this. In some jurisdictions, they don't allow delayed egress depending on the form. And so you need a sign on the door. You saw a sign in the video that says exactly what is going to happen. Once the alarm is triggered, it's an irreversible process. It, the door will unlock on loss of power. It's fail safe or signal from the fire command center to unlock. Any sprinkler detection or smoke detection would unlock the door. So if there is a fire, you can get out immediately. Emergency lighting needs to be provided at the door in some versions of the code and no more than one before entering an exit. That's pretty typical across all of the codes. UL 294 listed started in IBC 2015 edition and in NFPA 101, the 2018 edition. But you also have to look at which occupancy types will allow delayed egress. The next chart is comparing the different occupancy types. Group A assembly is not permitted in IBC until the 2021 edition, and then it's just courtrooms. In NFPA 101, there are some exceptions where they do allow it in assembly occupancies. Group B business and Group M mercantile are the most common places where you will see delayed egress, although in Group E educational, which is K through 12 and some daycares, starting in 2018 IBC classrooms that are less than 50, they do permit it on a secondary exit from that space, as long as it's not the main entry. NFPA 101 does allow it in Group E educational. So again, if you're working under IBC, it may not be permitted, but if you're under NFPA 101, it could be or, or would be. Like I mentioned before too, your state and local codes could vary. The most common components for delayed egress would either be a self-contained electromagnetic lock or a self-contained exit device that has all of the components, including the reset. If you are using the maglock version, you probably need a key switch for manual reset. It needs to be done at the door. Someone has to go and check out what's happening, make sure that the emergency is over before resetting the delayed egress device. And you may need a touch sense bar to initiate the delay if you're using a maglock, depending on the manufacturer. Some of the more common applications, the side or back door of a business, the side or back door of a store. There's always more than one exit and the owner wants to protect their goods. So rather than have someone just run out the side door with thousand dollars worth of merchandise, they could put a delayed egress on that back door, the side door with a sign 
with all meeting all of the requirements and just if if you're standing there with a thousand dollars worth of material in your hands and there's an alarm you and you can't get through the door you may want to drop everything and run in the opposite direction or the police may be there very shortly you might use it on the side or back door of a college university building which is group b business as long as there's no group a assembly mixed in and doors in hospitals you see delayed egress devices a lot in hospitals to restrict public access where you can't use controlled egress that's another episode of Code Corner with Katie at some point in the future. For more information and continuing education opportunities, please visit Asa Abloy Academy by clicking in the link in the comments below. Please click like and subscribe to this channel. You can follow me on Twitter at Art Consultant and or connect with me on LinkedIn for updates. If you would like those two charts that you saw in this presentation, you can email me at katherine.plower at asaabloy.com. I also have some more code related tools that you could use in an Excel spreadsheet. I'd be happy to send them. Just shoot me an email. Thanks for joining me in the Code Corner today. My name is Katie Flower, and my goal is to help you achieve safe security in the built environment.